Um, good afternoon, good evening, or, or even good morning for some of you, I guess. Um, this is Patrick Munley with uh, some live market analysis. Um, if you can hear me and see a Tickmill welcome screen on your screen, could you type a Y in the chat box just to let me know that, uh, that we're all set up from the audio visual side? Great stuff. Okay, so. Uh, before we get going, let's, uh, as always, remind ourselves of, uh, of the risks involved with, uh, with trading any financial instrument. And just to be clear that any views that I express during this presentation are strictly my own, and they certainly don't constitute investment advice of any sort, and they are certainly not uh, expressing the views of, of Tickmill, um, the organization. So um, just before we jump into today's uh, material, a uh, brief overview of myself uh, after I graduated, went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, um, then moved on to explore my passion for markets. I, uh, after taking a, a very big hit um, in the early days of what I would refer to as gambling, I sought out a mentor, researched, developed, tested and implemented a robust trading plan underpinned by a rigorous risk management strategy. This plan has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Um, from 2013, I took on external investor capital through a managed account service I run. And again, I've uh, managed to deliver annual positive returns. And I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Um, from 2010, I personally mentored uh, over 100 private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and more importantly, the mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. Uh, aside from my core trading, um, which is now predominantly an end of day activity and, and is highly automated, um, I also have two additional projects. One is the, uh, my role as a, a market expert um, for Tickmill, uh, where I provide a, a daily market outlook um, giving traders an overview of the key market themes and the key levels in, uh, in some of the major uh, FX pairs. I also provide a, a chart of the day, which is ostensibly a setup that I'm watching in the market for the trading session ahead. I provide some fundamental background and some, and some technical and flow information there. Um, the second project is that I'm also the head of trading and trader education for a online trading firm called FX Career Swap, who ostensibly are looking to take emerging retail trading talent, um, develop that talent and skill, and then underpin that, uh, that talent with a funded trading account that, uh, that each independent trader can take on and, and grow over time. Um, if anyone is interested in learning more about uh, the FX Career Swap opportunity, there is a link there at the bottom of the screen. You'll get a recording of this um, on the YouTube channel, so don't worry if you don't take the link down. But um, you can uh, you can certainly check out what's on offer from FX Career Swap um, through that link. Okay, let's move on to um, to today's material, and I want to start off really by <coughs> focusing some time just thinking about some of the elements that are in play with respect to global risk sentiment. And when I refer to global risk sentiment, more often than not, what I'm thinking about or, or talking to is the, um, is the S&P 500, which still really is the, is the benchmark um, for risk sentiment on a, on a global scale. And obviously the S&P 500 is a benchmark index, which represents the 500 uh, largest market cap companies in the US. Now, as most of you who, um, who are actively engaged in the markets will be aware, obviously, we've, uh, we've witnessed some fairly significant volatility over, uh, over the March, February, March period, obviously, um, driven predominantly by the, the global um, pandemic coronavirus. And aside, obviously, from the um, extremely sad and tragic um, human cost and elements, um, how we as traders have got to focus or, or, a, or assess the situation is obviously from a financial perspective and see where trading opportunities are. Um, the other impact that we uh, that has driven this dislocation in market pricing is uh, is really the dramatic declines we've seen in the oil prices, which have been predominantly um, led by the standoff between Russia and Saudi. So that's the backdrop in terms of the key dynamics that have been driving the forced liquidation we've seen in markets. 
And I just want to highlight some key points here because we're, we're at an inflection point. We're going to move on to the chart shortly and, and look at what, what I'm talking about with uh, mentioned inflection point. But what I want to think about is in terms of some historical overlays because in markets, what we generally see is that prices have a tendency um, to repeat former patterns. Now, when I say repeat, I don't mean they repeat um, exactly the, the prior patterns, but what we tend to see is this idea of history rhyming more, uh, more likely than actually repeating. And so if we look back to um, the 1950s, um, April has, has had a tendency to be the second best month of the year for the S&P 500. Okay, past 20 years, it's been the best month. So when March is lower, of the, of, the, of the occurrences where March has been lower over the past 20 years, it's been higher, it's ended the month higher 10 out of the past 12 instances. So from a statistical perspective, although the sample size isn't great, there is certainly something to be cognizant of there in terms of the potential for, um, for us to see an uptick in terms of uh, the S&P 500 through April. Now, what I, when I'm building my case for, you know, for trade execution, I'm, I'm, I'm driven by price, price first and foremost, because that's the final answer. Okay, so when I'm looking at the price, when I'm looking at the charts, you know, everything that I do as a trader is driven by price. But what I want to do as a trader to enhance my ability to um, maximize potential returns, I want to be aware of off chart or, or sentiment. Um, or price patterns or historical overlays, these help guide or um, potentially give me the opportunity to enhance my returns when I get a technical setup. So this is, uh, this is an important concept we want to, to be aware of at the moment, that from a, from a, a, a seasonal perspective and from a historical perspective, s and has the potential to carve out some higher ground during the month of April. Okay, especially on the back of this liquidation move we've seen, where you know we've been down 30-35%. The next consideration, and this is the chart that shows insider buying. When we're referring to insider buying, what we're talking about are um, those who are uh, those who would be on the in the C-suite in in corporates or have some type of insider inside access to um, to corporate data. And what we can see here is that in 2009, insider purchase transactions peaked into the first meaningful low that we saw after the panic. So after we'd seen that forced liquidation move, we saw insider purchase transactions peak, okay? We saw you know, an absolute spike to the high. And then what we saw was a recovery in terms of the S and P. So we this this would have been the stage in the in the in that panic where we'd had that initial round of um, fiscal and monetary stimulus, which created what what I've referred to and um, have, have posted charts on um, this idea of a, a crisis or a panic initial um, reaction low. And then we consolidated and then we rolled over. We got another spike in insider buying on that new low. And that new low was obviously the absolute low in March 2009. Since then, if we look at the spikes that we've seen in insider purchases, you can see that they broadly correlated with significant swing lows. And so when the last meaningful low we had was the crash, obviously, that we saw at the back end of 2018, and then the stabilization. And again, we saw a spike in insider purchase transactions. Now look where we are. We've had this waterfall decline so far in the S&P, and we've seen a spike equivalent to, or just shy of that first gush in 09, uh, sorry, late 08, of um, insider purchasing. Okay, so this isn't, you know, this, this is not an indicator that's gonna perfectly time the bottom, but it's certainly again, if we're trying to, you know, if we're trying to have a 360 view of the markets and pull on different um, areas of information, then this spike is 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 certainly something that we want to be cognizant of. Okay. Does it mean that this is the low? Well, no, because if you look at the equivalent spike that we got in 08, we undercut that low before we put in put in a bottom. Okay. So that's another piece of information we want to be cognizant of. So so far, we've got the idea in April that from a seasonal perspective, certainly the S&P can grind 
higher than current levels. We've also seen that initial spike in insider buying. And then we're now looking at, this is, the, uh, this is a sentiment gauge in terms of absolute bullishness and absolute bearishness in the market. And we can again see peaks in this in indicator certainly coincide broadly with some bottoming action in the markets. Okay, so we've we've eclipsed uh, or we're trading up into this this prior um, peak here, and we've seen a, an initial recovery. So we've got some sentiment in terms of absolute bullishness, absolute bearishness. We've got insider buying, and we've got a bit of seasonal support suggesting that we might see some uh, some higher price in the S&P. Now, as with everything I do within the markets, I'm always trying to think of both sides of the trade. Okay, so I'm never, I, I come to the markets from a point of balance, whereby I'm cognizant of both sides of the equation. And so what I want to just cover off with you quickly now is some of the less bullish scenarios. This is the VIX, the VIX is obviously the fear index. Anyone who's currently involved in the market should certainly be aware of what the VIX is and what its purpose is. But again, if we think about that, um, that low in 08, um, that initial low before we undercut it, in, in 2009, then the VIX is currently pretty nice. Uh, sorry, the VIX is currently tracking that type of model. So the VIX will peak before we see a trough. So that means that although we could see a recovery this month, maybe we could then head into May, and then we could see some more liquid, more selling. So that's uh, the, you know the VIX is something you should certainly be tracking if you're trading in these markets. And again, you can see it more clearly here um, that we've got the initial shock, the initial panic low. We got that pullback. We got that once the stimulus comes into the market, and they, you know the governments suggest they're going to do everything they can to keep this show going. Then we likely see a recovery, which we're currently seeing in markets, before we get that next panic spike, and we ultimately undercut our current low. And further support to this would be the idea that bear markets, which obviously we're currently uh, currently potentially in experience pretty dramatic rallies before they take the next leg down. So currently, if we work on this scale, this will put us into that 08 low. So if we think again, going back to that original um, uh, insider buying, so here's that 08 low before we make the, low, the final low in 09, okay? So this would suggest that we're currently consolidating and the consolidation can run. You can see here it's 46 days. So, you know, if we work on a plus or minus scale, so we could see that this April could be, uh, could, could potentially give us some upside. This is some research from Goldman Sachs, which basically depicts the same thing that we had this, um, this low, and then we, we saw a correction to the upside before rolling over to make the final low in March of 09. Okay. Now, um, this uh, again, this is a this is replicating um, a, again from Goldman Sachs. This is showing the performance of the S and P after we've seen 20% declines. This is going back to 1980. And again, this is broadly where we are now. So again, we could, if we track um, the the models. Uh, apart from here being 1987, where we quickly roll back over, you can see that we can have a period of corrective upside here, um, certainly over the coming uh, four or five weeks. Now, this is another overlay. This is from um, Jeff Gunlack of Double Line Capital, um, one of the, uh, the legends of, of the hedge fund industry. And this again is showing the potential for a correction to develop before we trade back down. And this is tracking some of the, the, you know, this is the 1929. I mean, if we're in a 1929 situation, then the correction we see here could be, uh, could be a correction that is terminal, and we certainly trade a hell of a lot lower. At this stage, and again, we can, what we want to do as traders, we don't, we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. We'll take it day by day, week by week, month by month. But we want to be cognizant because forewarned four warned is forearmed. Okay, so we want to be cognizant of the themes and the potential dynamics in the market. But certainly at the moment, if we're tracking against um, against the, the if, if we're in a, if for example that this uh, coronavirus situation is become is going to become far more serious, then the overlay for 1929, which is the, the last depression we actually saw, would suggest that you know we can rally here, but ultimately we will then take out the lows and trade meaningfully lower. Are we, in, are we in a 1929 scenario? We don't know. And certainly what's important 
is that, um, again, it's this idea of history rhyming, not necessarily repeating. So if, you, if we start to see a deluge of, of one second round data coming through or two, that the, you know, maybe the US, or, or we see a big second wave in China, that you know, suggests that we're going to see a meaningful uptick in cases in China, that type of, that type of information input will certainly um, alarm markets and alarm market participants. So again, on your radar in terms of your dashboard, when you're looking at markets, these are things you need to be thinking about in terms of giving you a perspective on the broader risk sentiment in the market. And then once you know what risk sentiment is doing, then that can feed into to your FX trades. And for me, um, my go-to, is obviously the dollar index. Now, this is the dollar index going back to, uh, to 1975, and you can see um, this is an overlay of, um, of the cycles within the dollar, and equally the, um, the major market events that coincide with the, um, the moves in the dollar. So at the moment, there is the potential that we are about to put in a significant dollar peak. And for those who are involved in um, last week's session, I'm gonna, Go back to the, the charts that I covered with respect to the, the weekly charts, and we'll see where we are in terms of how that potential dollar peak is setting up. But you can certainly see there on this chart that we are it, 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 there is a, a high degree of cyclicality within the dollar index, and there is also this idea of um, crisis followed by a flooding of liquidity from um, from the Federal Reserve. Or central banks that often then precedes that that dollar decline, and this is um, coming bringing us right up to date with respect to the, the funding that we've seen from the Fed, this, the huge fiscal stimulus that is coming into the markets um, by way of um, of the uh, well initially the stimulus package, two trillion dollar stimulus package. We now hear that um, Trump is talking about a. Uh, or, or muting the idea of a, an additional two trillion dollars. So we're now talking about four trillion dollars of dollars um, coming into the market in a in an infrastructure plan. So I mean, the potential here is that the U.S. dollar momentum that we've seen, and there's obviously a lead and a lag element with respect to this, but there is the potential that as this funding just escalates beyond um, any any prior levels, that we are more likely than not to see at a minimum, a meaningful correction in the dollar index. Okay, obviously that was a, a bit of a, um, a data dump there with respect to um, the, the sentiments and, and additional off the chart information that we want to be plugged into. Does anyone have any questions with respect to any of those slides before I move on to the charts? A no in the chat box if, if, it's, a, if, you, if it's all clear, just so I can see uh, we're all alive and listening. Okay, good stuff. Let's uh, let's start with the charts. So let's go back to the the dollar index. This is the weekly chart that we looked at last week, um, and we are seeing as I, as we discussed last week, we had, I talked about the idea that after this type of move, this was a one of the the, the biggest um, declines on a weekly scale in the dollar index over the past ten years, and um, and I anticipated that we would likely see some consolidation. What this consolidation allows to occur potentially, we obviously don't know for certain, but potentially it builds enough, it builds fuel in the market for the next. Uh, if we can break the, the, these lows, by the time we go through these lows, there'll be sufficient stops under these levels to um, to take us um, to take us down to the next area of support. So we're seeing consolidation. Tomorrow we get non-farm payrolls data in the U.S. Now. If that um, comes out, you know, we, we're expecting obviously a dire reading. If the reading is even worse than the, uh, the, the most dire expectations, that could fuel this, this break in the dollar index. Um, so we want to, to really important to see where we close on this dollar tomorrow. If we, if we close back towards the lows on the weekly charts, then this setup in terms of, you know, the potential for meaningful dollar weakness um, could well be underway. So really want to pay attention to where we close. Even if we close back towards the halfway point, I mean, um, let me just blow this up here. Yeah. So I mean, let's just bring in the Fib tool here. So even you know, even if we close towards the halfway point, next week 
we could see, you know, a bearish candle that en engulfs this prior week and, and takes out the lows. So it's really important um, from a, a big picture perspective that you pay attention to these weekly charts and certainly you always want to be checking in um, on Sunday evening before you started trading week, see where the weekly close was on Friday, because that information is certainly useful for trying to or attempting to capture some of the bigger swings in the market. So that's the dollar index. Let's check in with the euro. Euro, obviously, 60% of, of the dollar index is the euro, so we can expect it to be a, 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 um, a corollary picture um, to, the, uh, to the dollar. So we're pulling back. Again, we're trading here on the euro into, um, into the 50% retracement area now. So we'll see again where we close tomorrow. If, if, if buyers start to step in here and we close towards the highs tomorrow, um, then this, you know, this, this idea of the dollar index rolling over and we're seeing some strength in the euro can certainly, uh, certainly is getting technical support there. Again, we could close at the 50% or maybe a bit lower, and then next week see the bullish reversal. And, um, and you know, this, the, the pattern is still valid. Okay, for me, really, unless we take out the 78.6% retracement of this, um, this reversal candle, then I'm still, obviously, I'd be trading from a transactional perspective, trading um, signals, but from a structural perspective, I'd be certainly cognizant of this because this could be the move, you know, this could, could be potentially start of a major uh, major move in the euro in line with that dollar index. The chart that is really of interest to me at the moment is sterling. Setup is very clean. We tested 35 years low, uh, 35 year lows, big bullish reversal on the weekly, and we have we haven't even taken out the 38.2% the retracement. And we look like we're going to put in uh, again. We have to see where we close tomorrow, but there's a potential here for um, for an inside pin bar. Um, and if we then into to Monday, uh, Sunday night, Monday, take that level out, then there's, um, there's certainly scope for this uh, this dollar to uh, this sterling dollar to take off. Um, those are the key weekly charts that I'm that I'm tracking at the moment. We obviously have similar setups across the board. Some of them aren't as clean as the ones that we've got in the in the three majors there. The uh, Aussie, if we can get a close back towards the highs here on the week, again similar pattern, bullish inside pin bar suggesting that we can see further um, corrective upside. And again, with this Aussie and certainly the Kiwi as well, we want to think in terms of risk sentiment. So if the S&P, for example, is, is going to put in a similar pattern at the moment, it's not looking so uh, not looking so bright. But if we close on the week back towards the highs here, and then we've got uh, a three candle, uh, a three candlestick reversal pattern potentially developing, in the S&P, so then we'd be looking towards this 2800 area, and that would probably take with it the Aussie and the Kiwi, which are, are the, really the risk pairs in terms of the, the higher correlation with, um, with risk on, risk off. But to a high degree at the moment, what we're all trading is the S&P because that's been driven by the dollar dynamic. So in periods where um, we're seeing weakness in the S&P, we're seeing strength in the dollar. And when periods where we're seeing strength in the S&P, we're seeing weakness in the dollar. So this is why I say to all the guys I'm working with, you've really got to be cognizant of where the S&P is and what levels are, um, are important. And to that end, let's check in with the, um, the main intraday charts that I track. So here's the dollar index. What I'm looking for is this next leg to, to run higher here. Um, we may not see it, but that would be an ideal corrective pattern to develop. Test up into this 100. Uh, 150, 160 area, bearish reversal patterns would, uh, would be a, a setup on, on the short side. So continuing to, to watch this, this move in the dollar. Um, gold, we pulled that, we've, uh, we've got a, a symmetry swing move here in, in gold. So if we overlay that last corrective leg with this one, we'd still see another leg lower here. Um, but ultimately what I'm looking for is, a, is another leg to the upside to basically complete, complete this initial cycle, and then we'll see um, how the price action plays out in gold. Euro, inverse to the dollar. So I'm looking for a test now, this 108.16 area, which will complete a potentially uh, pretty clean corrective cycle. And if the buyers step in here, bullish reversal patterns, that'll be an opportunity to do something on the long side for, for the next leg to the upside. Again, we take out this 78.6% retracement, and, um, and then I think we're going back to lows. We could be breaking breaking lows, and that would see the dollar taking another leg to the upside. 
What you want to bear in mind with this, uh, just quickly going back to this chart, is that there is a lag between this, these funding run-ups and the actual peak in the dollar. So we, we still could see another leg of dollar upside, but still this funding, um, this huge um, funding issue is, uh, is, is going to come to bear on the dollar at some point, okay? So that's something to be cognizant of. But the technical setup looks pretty clean at the moment. Um, sterling, we're in a, uh, a bullish consolidation here. I think we're probably going to see a push to the upside, which is going to we going to see that that breakout in the um, in the weekly chart. But then ultimately, I, I don't need to chase it here because we will there will be a corrective phase to unwind some of the um, the bullishness on the daily chart. We'll take a look at that in a minute. So I don't need to chase this break. But certainly once we do break, then I've got confirmation of the bullish impulse set up. And then I'm looking to, to get, get into the, the first correction versus this impulse wave. OK, so I don't need to chase the market here because, you know, more often than not, what we, we see is we see a, a pop to the upside and a very sharp reversal. Certainly once we see this type of consolidation um, and that just, you know, it's, it's a, a bull trap of sorts and then we get the pullback. And that, that pullback gives you that better entry opportunity. So again, that comes down to having a plan in place, trading with patience and discipline, letting the market come to you, having your levels defined, having your entry defined, how you're going to execute your trade, and then pulling the trigger with, uh, with rigorous risk management. Dollar yen, look like we're getting a, a potential bottom here to get that pullback into the, uh, the 10950 area, which again, bearish reversal patterns there would give a sell signal. Um, Aussie, looks like we should see now versus, uh, versus this current high, um, at a minimum what I'd expect uh, from the Aussie here is, um, as we'd see that leg and then this leg down into this support, which is symmetry swing with this decline, and then the potential for another leg higher here before again we'd see a more meaningful correction. So there is opportunity um, on, on both the short and the long side in the, in the Aussie at this stage. And again, these are the first moves off the lows. When we look at the S&P, I'll be able to give you a better context for that. But if, even if this, we, we, once, once you've got these panic lows in place, you can certainly trade both sides of the market. And what you can do then is when you get an entry or a signal that aligns with some of this bigger picture stuff in terms of the weekly charts, then you can look for those trades to try and juice them um, for, for more upside. Uh, the loony, we corrected into the symmetry swing point and um, we're holding that at the moment. But even here, what we can see is if we do hold, we've got um, the potential for a, uh, an ABCD pattern here which will simply bring us back into these highs, so a double correction almost, and then we could still see um, this move to the downside to finish this initial cycle. Uh, Swissy, if, we, if we're going to hold this level as support now, then, um, then again with the Swissy we can see this deeper quality move back into this area, which would set up another opportunity on the short side of the Swissy. Uh, Kiwi, looking for this to, to grind a bit lower here. Um, Kiwi's being supported at the moment with cross flows because it's it's being held up on the um, on the on the Aussie Kiwi chart uh, the, with, with weakness in that chart for the Aussie. So this might grind around here, but ultimately I'd be looking for a symmetry swing move and then another leg to the upside. Now this is a chart I'm watching most carefully at the moment. This is the S&P 500. Um, had uh, had a great opportunities in this on the long side uh, over the last week. I'm, and once again, I'm looking to reload on the long side. So I think we, we likely see um, today, we could see a, another leg of correction here and then get, um, get a test down into this is what I'm really looking for, this test of this 2370 area. And again, looking for bullish reversal patterns um, on the four hour or the daily chart to, uh, to get in on the long side. And then um, we could see this next leg of upside. And again, this, so this would broadly coincide with that idea that we could see some, some strength here in April. 
before we take uh, before we take another leg down into May. So um, this would, you know, this is this is a pattern I'm watching, and certainly this is going to be a very key area if we see it. This 2800, uh, 2780 area is going to uh, is really going to define the next phase of these markets because if we come into big offers in this area, that's going to set up the move to retest these lows to to my mind. Um, crude. See a bit of a bounce in crude. Uh, obviously, Trump came out overnight saying that, uh, that he perceives that there's the potential for some type of reconciliation in the, uh, the um, Saudi-Russia uh, issue. But uh, the technical pattern still suggests to me at this stage, um, whilst we trade below 25, that we'll see another new low, potentially down to 15, for a, another spike high to, to run for the market. For ultimately, this is the... This is the area I'm really focused on in terms of crude. A, um, a test of the 10 to 12 dollar area, I think, would set up a significant buying opportunity, um, because as I mentioned previously, that 10 to 12 dollar area is where the Saudis start to run into trouble. That's their break-even point on producing a barrel of oil. Now there, there is talk in the market that it's even lower at eight dollars, but um, most participants say that 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 10 to 12 dollar area it starts to become painful for the Saudis. So we'll uh, we'll watch that um, that area closely. So finally, just want to look at some um, some of the setups I'm I'm watching at the moment. The Singapore dollar. I've been trading. The, I've had two two great runs in this over the past uh, past few weeks. Got another setup here using the the core swing strategy. Um, we've got a, a bullish reversal capital. Into a 50% retracement at uh, at the monthly pivot, and we've got some bullish divergence developing in the RSI stochastic. So what I'm looking for now is a break of the overnight highs, uh, 143.95 area, stop below the lows, and then I'm going to trade this up into certainly look for a retest of the prior swing highs and maybe something more meaningful. So that's one that I'm watching. Uh, what else have I got here? The Aussie. Again, looking to play a correction here in the Aussie. I'm looking for uh, for a breach of the overnight lows to, to get in on the short side. And again, once I'm in this trade, the immediate area that I'm going to um, to be looking at, let me just bring in the tracing tool. First area of interest, once I if, if I can get this trade going, is going to be the 50% retracement. And I'm going to be watching how price responds there because that could. Again, thinking in terms of these these corrective patterns that I'm talking about, that could be where we get our our B point or our C point, and that could take us take us higher. So the setup is valid on the short side for a, for certainly a correction from this uh, from this reaction low, but um, be managing the the position carefully. Similar story in the Aussie yen. Same pattern here that I'm, I'm tracking. Um, most of these are po posted on Trading View for those who want to, to follow along. Uh, we're also getting the same setup here in the Aussie Kiwi. See, I've highlighted the um, the levels I'm I'm watching, and um, and those really are the key trades that I'm looking at as we uh, as we head into uh, the next couple of days. Okay, are there any questions, guys, or would anyone like me to take a look at the chart that I haven't uh, covered in the in the presentation here? You can just type the chart into the um, into the chat box. If you want to type it in, Christopher, and I'll uh, I'll come back, I'll, I'll answer. Gold four hour, okay. Uh, Well, I use um, I use this this VWAP, this longer term VWAP. So this is uh, this is giving me basically the weekly read. So the weekly read is bullish. Um, but if we go to uh, this chart here, and this is this this is so the weekly and the monthly are both bullish, and we're correcting at the moment. And if you think about the idea, um, Christopher, with respect to this this dollar crisis that we could see. Then um, you know gold's price in dollars, and more often than not, certainly in, in, in uh, 
you know, in this recent phase where we saw forced liquidation, we saw gold and um, the dollar moving in tandem, and that was because people were having to sell out of their gold positions to get dollars to fund their losses in, in their stock portfolios. So that's a common uh, phenomenon that occurred. And if you go back to 08, 09, um, let's change this to the weekly. <clears throat> Let's go here. So 08, 09, um, we saw a similar thing. Gold declined, bottomed, and then went on a tear as uh, as the dollar weakened. So I mean, I'm, you know, certainly, certainly the the trends on the higher time frames are bullish, and then what you're looking for is a decent entry point on the daily or, or your interest rate charts. Swissy, Martinique. Uh, let's go to here. So yeah, at this stage, I've been looking for another leg higher in the Swissy. Similar to, you know, similar obviously to the idea in the dollar. So I'm looking for these corrections to play out before looking at. Uh, look at no problem, Christopher. Um, before looking at, at reselling dollars. So you can see the theme here is uh, is the potential for another another leg lower here before we get into the decision point. Um, Euro sterling. Let's take a look at that. So we've got the Euro sterling. This is, if we use that as our A, B, C. So we're through um, the equality swing. So what this suggests to me is that we're going to grind probably a bit lower here. So at some point, what we're going to see is this move. And then we're likely to see um, this leg. So the target zone for me now would be down into this zone here, and uh, which is the 161 extension, obviously, of the... Um, of that initial correction and you can see also we have the 78.6 percent retracement and we have some prior highs here from structural perspective so let's just take it out a leg or two here and bring this in so i mean this is the this will be the support area to to focus up on if you're um if you're looking to do something in the in the euro externally Any other questions, guys? Okay, thank you very much for your time, uh, and I hope this stuff helps. And I'll catch you all at the same time next week. Thanks a lot, guys.